Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to RNG manipulate static encounters in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. This is a little bit different from how RNG manipulation is in Emerald and very different from how it is in Fire Red and Leaf Green. If you're interested in doing it in those games, I've made videos on both of them, so you could check the links in the description or you could check cards that I'll have on top of the video. Uh, with that out of the way, let's move on to what you'll actually need in order to do this RNG. So the first thing about Ruby and Sapphire is you always need a dead internal battery if you want to do some of these simple RNG manips. You'll know your internal battery is dead if this message plays when you're hitting A at the save file. Uh, all it means is that like your berries won't grow and the time of day won't change. That's all this affects. But the initial seed is seeded by what date and time your game thinks it is. And if this battery is dead, it's always going to be having the same initial seed, which is 5A0. So if you want to do this type of RNG manip, you need a dead internal battery. Then you're going to want to be saved in front of whatever static Pokemon you're trying to catch or receive. And now is a good time to go over what is a static Pokemon. So a static Pokemon is effectively any of the legendaries in the game. So the Pokemon that you can only interact with once. All of the Regis, Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, uh, and the Lati Twins. Both the one from the TV that you get for roaming and the one on Southern Island. In addition to that, all of the Kecleons that you can actually catch, they're static encounters. And then any Pokemon that an NPC gives you that isn't a trade. So something like the Starter or the Why Not Egg. Uh, or the uh, cast form, or the fossils. All of these are static Pokemon, and they all use the same exact method in order to uh, generate their IVs and their PID. Uh, so with that said, let's go over some of the things you're going to need to do in order to properly RNG manip them. So if you're actually trying to catch a Pokemon, you're going to want a you know good way to catch it. Uh, I have an Emerald version, so I just send over Master Balls. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, but if you don't have Master Balls, having a good catcher like a Breloom with Spore or a Smeargle or something like that, that's always a good second option. If you're just receiving the Pokemon, you don't have to worry about any of that. In addition, I suggest having some rare candies. Again, since I have an Emerald, I've just cloned a bunch of Pokemon, sent them over to my Ruby, took the rare candies off. But you probably really don't need more than like five rare candies. And this is to figure out your IVs to know how far uh, you missed your target. Uh, with that said, you can just save in front of the encounter, and you're all ready to go on the game side. Now, if you want your Pokemon shiny, you're going to need to know your secret ID. Uh, the secret ID is something that you can deduce by either having a shiny Pokemon and then calculating its IVs, or it's something that you can RNG manipulate when you start a new save file. I have videos on both of these subjects, so if you don't already have your secret ID and you're starting a new game or you already have a shiny and you need to know it so you can RNG more shinies, uh, you can check out those videos in the description as well. Okay, out of game, we're also going to need a few different computer programs. We're going to need Eon Timer 3.0 by Dylan Meadows. And when you're in here, there's a little settings cog and then there's a uh, timer section. The timer console is based on what console you're playing on. So if you're playing on a regular GBA, uh, which is any of the Game Boy Advances, so just a GBA, GBA SP, GBA Micro, or the Game Boy Player, select GBA. If you're playing on a DS, which is what I'm playing on, select NDS-GBA. You do not want to select NDS. They are different frame rates. And then hit OK. Uh, from there, you're going to go to the Gen 3 tab. Calibration, leave 0, and the pre-timer set to 5000. The target frame, we're going to leave at 0 for now, and then we'll come back to that a little bit later. So we're also going to need Pokefinder by Admiral Fish. Uh, in Pokefinder, we're going to want to make sure on the main window we're on the Gen 3 tab, and we're going to click Static. A new window will pop up, and there's two different sections, Searcher and Generator. We're going to stay in Generator. Now here's where you're going to make sure you have your profile selected. So you can click Manager, and if you don't already have a profile set up, you can click New here to create a profile. I've already got a profile, but within the profile, what you want to make sure is that you have the dead battery checkbox checked. This will auto populate the seed with 5A0. In addition, this is where you type in your trainer ID and your secret ID. With all of that said, we can begin looking for any specifics that we may want in regards to which Pokemon we're getting. So the method is always going to be one for Ruby and Sapphire. The initial advances will start with zero and max advances. This is fine as well. The max advances is basically what is the maximum amount of time you are willing to wait? And the answer should be not that long. This is a 1 60th of a second window, and waiting even 100,000 frames like is here is just a very long wait, uh, upwards of 20 minutes for just one A press, which you could easily miss. Seed, like I said, is 5A0. Now, in the filter section, the IVs 
is what kind of IVs you're looking for in a Pokemon. Uh, I'm just going to go for a shiny in this video, but you could specify anything that you would want here. For ability, I don't care either. And for gender, I also don't care. Shiny, there's a few options here. There's any, there's star, there's square, and then there's star square. This has to do with how shinies are shown in Generation 8. Um, and so it just depends if you're going to transfer this Pokemon up and do you care. So if you want a square shiny for Gen 8, you'd have to select square. And if you want a star shiny, you have to select star. If you don't care or you're not going to transfer it, select star slash square, and that will give you both options uh, in total. Here you could also pick which hidden power you want, and you could also pick what nature you want. Uh, I don't want any of these. None of these matter to me. And then I'm going to hit generate. And you'll get a list of different... Um, you'll get a list of different spreads that are all shiny for you. And you can see that they're listed star, star, square. We got a square shiny here, stuff like that. So after you find a spread that you want, um, you just take note of the number of advances you'll need to reach it. So if we take a look here, uh, I'm going to be going for frame 7660. It is an adamant uh, frame, and it's got 31 attack, defense, and speed, which is a pretty good spread uh, for so low into the game. And it's also going to be square shiny for me if I wanted to transfer this up. So what we're going to do is copy that advances, and we're going to put that into Eon Timer. So in Eon Timer, you're going to paste it into the target frame section, and then we're just about ready to go. The last thing we want to do is on the main window of Pokefinder, you're going to click the Tools tab, and then you're going to scroll down to the IV calculator and open that up. This is so we can figure out what frame we've hit. So in the IV calculator, make sure to click, uh, pick the correct game and then type whatever Pokemon you're going to be aiming for. In addition, set the base level here. Regirock is at 40. And this is why we need the rare candies, because the lower level Pokemon that you're targeting, uh, the less precise the IVs are going to be just from one level. But even five rare candies can help drastically reduce the amount of information that you're getting. So with all that set up, we're just about ready to go. The first time you do this RNG, you're going to miss, and that's okay. And that's because every single Pokemon has a different amount of wait time after you hit A to encounter it or receive it. And we have to figure this out by just doing one attempt and just missing it. We're going to start Eon Timer, and when we hit Start, the pre-timer section is going to count down. This is five seconds. At the end of the five seconds, the final beep, you're going to soft reset the game. Then you're going to mash A until you can load back up into the overworld, and you're going to wait until the second timer finishes counting. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to start Eon Timer. So I hit the soft reset just as the game, uh, the timer finished counting down, and I'm going to load back up into the overworld and wait in front of Regirock. In addition, I'm going to bring up the pause menu here. This is to prevent, uh, in you know, depending on where you are, the overworld advances can be a little bit random. Uh, some areas have random overworld advances, and some areas have NPCs uh, that also cause random advances. And by bringing up the pause menu, we are just preventing any of that from happening. And now all we have to do is wait. Alright, so our counter is almost done. When the beeps start, we're going to close the menu and hit A on the final beep to receive or encounter the Pokemon. So I hit A to encounter Regirock here, and we are going to see a non-shiny Regirock. And that's okay. We intended to miss the first time. So because I have a Master Ball, I'm just going to quickly catch it. Okay, so now that we have it, let's take a look at the Regirock stats. What we're going to do is input them into the IV calculator within Pokefinder. So it's level 40, and it's a hardy nature. Type all the stats in here. 90 attack, 176 defense, 49 speed, or special attack, uh, 85 special defense, and 55 speed. Then we click find IVs. Make sure all of these are valid results. And you can see we're within 1 to 2, uh, you know, IVs of everything. It's 15 to 17, 13 to 14, etc. But what we can do is, if it's not precise enough, we can click Add Row, type 41, and then give the Regirock a rare candy. And we can input these stats further here. 92. And it's okay to use them this way because we know we're not missing... Uh, we're not going to lose these rare candies permanently. Find IVs again. And you can see this one changed from 15 to 16 or 15 to 17 to 16 to 17. So doing that over and over, the higher level you can get it up to, will make it more precise. But I think this is precise enough for now. So now what we're going to do is take this information back to the Gen 3 static window. 
what we're going to do is make this not star and square anymore. We're going to make this any. Then we're going to type the IV ranges that we found into here. So 16 to 17, 13 to 14, 28 to 29, 10 to 12, 0 to 2, 25 to 26. And then we can click generate and we'll get a result. So this is the Reggie Rock that I hit. It says 7710 is the number of advances that were done. What we can do is paste that into the frame hit target of Eon Timer and click update. It will change this calibration value automatically. And this is basically just doing the math, how late was this guy, and then putting it into the calibration value. Now you might notice that 7710 is not 838 frames away from 7660. And that's because the calibration value is not in frames, it's in milliseconds. So don't worry about that being such a big number. Now with that said, we could just do another attempt. So we start Eon Timer. Soft reset when the countdown finishes and do the wait one more time. Or two more times, potentially. Uh, but once you get calibrated like this, it is only a matter of time before you succeed at the RNG. Okay, now that the timer is ending, we just have to do the exact same thing we did before, and hopefully we'll be able to hit our shiny target. And hopefully, thanks to the calibration, we'll have a shiny. That's okay. We just need to figure out exactly how far off we were again. I suspect we'll be much closer this time, though. Alright, now that we've got the IVs, let's see what we hit. So we hit uh, 7658, so we were much closer. This is two uh, advances earlier than we wanted. Uh, we can put this into Eon Timer again and click Update, and you'll see a much smaller change there. And just give it another go. All right, hopefully after our adjustments, we've got a shiny. Oh, and there he is. All right, let's just catch this real quick. So we can see it's adamant as it was predicted in Poke Finder. We reset all of these to zero. And we make it star slash square. You can see this is supposed to be adamant. And if we type the stats into the IV calculator, I'm certain we will get the IVs listed here as well, so you can see that uh, it is exactly the target uh, frame that we wanted. Find IVs, you can see 23 to 24, 30 to 31, 30 to 31, 28 to 29, 6 and 30 to 31. So as you can see, this is definitely the exact target that we wanted, and it only took us a few attempts. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you've got any questions or anything like that, leave them down below or join my Discord for some more help. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Thank you to all of my channel members. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate your support on stream and for the videos. Uh, if you guys want to become a channel member, you can do it for as low as $2.99. You get access to my videos early and some cool emotes to use in my streams. In addition, if I hit 30 channel members, I'm going to be doing the Gen 4 Battle Frontier instead of just the Gen 3 Battle Frontier. So that will be fun. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.